Hello and welcome to Hiblio TV. My name is Paul Norrish and thanks for joining us. Money worries are high on the list of concerns for many people in the United Kingdom, with many feeling low or anxious. Today we talk to Deborah Gibman about her tips to help you feel better and more in control. Welcome. Thank you. Very topical topic this week. A lot's been in the news about money worries. Yes, definitely. It's high on the, the agenda. January is always a time when people are feeling that pinch when it comes to money. So if you could just start, Deborah, thanks very much for coming in. Tell us a bit about yourself and the organisation that you work from, because you come from a credit union and That's a right. lot of people out there might not know what a credit union does. Mm -hmm. So a bit more about that would be great. OK, so a credit union is uh, a savings and loans provider in a nutshell. Uh, we work in the community and that's what Plough and Share does. Uh, we work within Devon. Um, every credit union will have a common bond. For us, it's the people who live, work and study in Devon. Fantastic. So just starting our conversation, worrying about money can, can have a serious impact on people's health. That's right. And, uh, what, what kind of symptoms might be showing through that? OK, so they'll be suffering from uh, anxiety. So they may, um, may be struggling to cope uh, with their work, maybe at home, more arguments perhaps, struggling to pay attention to things because actually their mind's on other, you know, the, the worries that are going through associated with paying bills or any, any financial worry. So we're talking there about things like sleep problems. Mm. I might be losing my temper more frequently. Absolutely. Swinging off the handle a bit quicker yeah. than normal trouble relaxing or, mm. or, um, and maybe having negative or unhelpful thoughts. Yes, Because definitely. for some people, I can imagine having uh, these kind of worries mm. that it just feels like that little lead ball above your head just gets yeah. bigger and bigger. Yes, and when you feel like that, sometimes, um, especially if you're coping on your own and you don't feel that you can speak to anybody, it does feel that it's just a weight with you constantly and there's no let up from that. Mm. So that increases the feeling of an anxiety. And, and, and we know, you know, as people are working to talk about our own example, my own example is, you know, that actually I almost lead two lives. Mm. You know, I've got my work life and I've got my home life. And mm. I can imagine with money worries, and I, you know, I haven't been there, but I, I can imagine with money worries that actually that most probably travels from home into my work as well. And, and as you say, can make, it's very difficult. It does. And it's, it's wrong to say that we can leave our problems at, at our work doorstep. We take them with us. So if you're, if you're doing a particularly a manual job, perhaps, and you haven't had a good night's sleep because you're worrying about it, that is going to impact your work. Perhaps you're going to have more time off sick mm -hmm. um, because of the anxiety created. There are lots of problems in being able to concentrate at work. And we all want to go to work and do the best we can when we're there. But if you are struggling because you've got money worries, that's going to come with you. But we're going to come on to your tips. Mm -hmm. uh, it talks about life hopefully getting better. And mm -hmm. we're going to talk about the help yes. that people can reach out for. But um, just, just going back slightly, you know, I imagine it must be quite tempting. Uh, and you hear it and it's been, you know, in, in some of the soaps on TV where this topic's been covered, mm -hmm. that that envelope arrives through the door and you often see it put on the kitchen worktop yep. or straight in the trash can. Do, is it too tempting for people to push away? Yes, it is. Um, when problems become that stressful, uh, especially money, um, we need it for everyday things. Um, it is tempting just to put that envelope underneath the carpet, so ignore it, don't open it. If we put it somewhere and mm. close that book, we don't have to look at it anymore and it's not there in front of us. That doesn't actually take the problem away and another envelope is going to follow. So there is no way of hiding from it. Mm. Eventually you are going to have to open that envelope up. And it is opening that envelope, mm. I, I, as you say. When we think about debt and we're coming on to the help where people can get help, do, mm. do they, um, you know, these series of envelopes coming through the door, do, do, when, do people get bogged down with it and, uh, and push it away, as we say, and don't actually accept that actually it's happening to them? Yes. And it's it it is stressful you know if you if you're constantly being bombarded by um lots of different companies or lots of different organizations that want to get in touch with you because you you can't pay your bills or or you've missed a payment yes people will eventually start to feel absolutely weighted down by that so we're coming on to talk about your tips mm -hmm. you know for and as i remember my nan and even my father 
call him father there. No, I had a metal tin, you know, and, and my nan always used to say, if you've got the money, create a budget and stick to that. Right. Was she right with her wisdom? Where, where? Yes, yes, absolutely. Budgets, that's where you begin. Even if you've got, um, if you feel that you can't actually um, pay for, you know, all your bills at the end of the month, if you, ha if you actually have a budget, you know what's coming into mm. your house, all the money that's coming in, and you know what you have to pay out, then you've got a beginning of control. So that's the first thing you do. Know what you're paying out, know what's coming in. So that's your first part of control. Yeah. And, and the next best tip after that is don't forget all those tiny things. We always buy people birthday presents and cards, yes. but often we don't budget for that. So make sure that you're including all the, the one-offs that you have. Maybe um, Christmas is a big one. Yes. That's not a one-off, everybody does it every year. So saving for that, making sure you're putting that little bit of money aside for it, takes away the stress of a massive bill at the end of the, of the year or the end of the month. I'm surprised you never mentioned jam jars because you've, <laughs> you've got a thing for jam jars, haven't you? I but do. what we were saying there is do budget that. Because we've all got calendars in our kitchens yes. with key dates. Yes. Have you got a calendar in your I kitchen? I do. Okay, yeah. so everyone's got the calendar in the kitchen with a key date. So they know what's coming up. Yeah. What you're saying is we should be looking at that and trying and I know we might cover this in a future show, uh, uh, planning for that in yeah. advance. Yeah, so I do love jam jars. Jam jars um, are a physical, a physical object you can see your money going into. When I do my shopping, this is very personal for me, but when I do my shopping, I've got my weekly budget and I stick to it rigidly. So I know what's, uh, what money I have to spend. I create a list, I plan my meals, and that enables me to know that any money I've got left at the end of my housekeeping, I can pop in the jam jar, and those are for the treats that I want to buy. Mm -hmm. You know, maybe ice cream, maybe chocolate. You know, those are the kind of things that allow us to, to budget, and that's what the jam jar is there for. But you can use it for more than just but treats. The image that we had associated with today's program was mm -hmm. the, the piggy bank mm -hmm. that we were all recognised with a hammer looming over it. Mm -hmm. And that must be all too easy then, just to reach for that jam jar because yeah. something else has happened that you haven't got on your calendar list and you raid that. But that's what it's there for. So that rainy day idea that you put a little bit of money away for a rainy day or, or something unexpected happens, that's what that jam jar is there for. So you can open the jar, tip the money out and you've got some extra money that you've put by. It might be a small amount to begin mm. with, but once you get used to budgeting, you find that you're able to put money in and as you see it grow, mm. you feel better about that. That's a really good feeling and you're able to take the money when you need it. And I'm, uh, you know, we, we talk and you're very organised there, it sounds like when you're going around the supermarkets and not being tempted by all the offers, mm. you know, and that's very difficult, isn't it? Is, it? it yes. is very difficult. But I imagine, you know, with the, with the debt that goes on, you may have been leading a certain kind of lifestyle, mm. you know, and it's that recognition that actually you're going to have to step back away from that. Yeah, and that's, it's, it's very difficult if you're used to leading a certain lifestyle and you're buying what you want, when you want it. When you sort out a budget for yourself, when you have to step away from that type of lifestyle, you then, it can feel like a grieving process. So you have to take time to consider, uh, consider that for yourself and not be hard on yourself. I think that's really important. Don't be hard on the fact that you have to have a budget in place. It might be temporary. You know, it might be for maybe uh, six months a year. It could be longer. But don't feel bad that you have to put a budget in place. And one of the others uh, around staying positive mm. in this process, because I can imagine that, you know, you're dealing with all this mm. uh, and something about not, not faking your smile, let people know how you're actually yeah. feeling. People don't want to talk about their financial stresses. They don't want to admit that they, that they feel like they've failed when they haven't. Everybody has ups and downs in their finances. Um, we don't, you know, go through life as, um, you know, with it all happening very easily. Sometimes it just is hard. So, yes, we need to make sure that people around us know that, uh, that times are difficult. When students go to university, often they will say, I don't have enough money to do something. And they'll be very open about it. And suddenly when we're no longer students, we, we don't behave in that same way. In actual fact, we should do. And that, that, that feeling, as you say, why, why we don't engage is um, around guilt, shame. Mm. Uh, 
that can almost make it harder to ask for help. Yes. Is that some of the resistance? All these letters are coming through. Yeah. But because I, you know, be, been spending, actually, I might not want to share that with my brother or sister or closest friend. Yeah. You know, because of that shame or guilt, or even my parents. I, I was shocked with some of the reading online about I, I didn't tell mum and dad what was really going on inside. And the reality is that people aren't going to hold a light to you and blame you. They're not going to do that. What they want to do is help. Yeah. And everybody, if you stand up and say, I really need some help with that. Can you help with the budget? Can you help me do um, some planning perhaps for the future? Then family will help. And that includes children as well. You can always engage children with saving. You know, go back to jam jars. You know, children like the idea of a piggy bank, yes. of making sure that at the end of the, the weekly shop, they're the ones that put the money in, in, in a jar. And it makes them feel that they're part of that process because children um, can be demanding. You know, they, they want everything in sight. So yes, absolutely. Make them part of the process. Don't shy away from asking for, uh, especially your family, for, for help. Because it is most probably all too easy to feel isolated with yes. your money worries. Mm. And actually, the sooner that you identify um, and most probably share that with someone, and that yes. could feel very awkward, as we've said, yes. um, the better for you. And it's about overcoming that awkwardness with, with your family. Now, if we come on then to, so the letters have come through, mm. I've got some ways that actually I'm, I'm preparing for advance, I'm recognising mm. the debt. But if we go on to, if someone is watching and they mm. are got some real money worries, they, they, they can't discuss that with the family for whatever reason. Mm -hmm. um, and it might be quite smaller, it might be quite mm. a large amount. There are organisations out there that can help. Yes. So step change, um, various charities, uh, including the National uh, Debt Line, you've got um, Citizens Advice Bureau. And there are various different ways in which you can engage with them as well. So if you don't feel like walking in through their front door and talking to them, you can speak to them on the telephone or you can even um, talk to them on a live chat. So there, there are ways of engaging and talking with so them. So I can dip my toe in the water, yeah. but that help, their, their job within these organisations, mm. these charities, are to help stabilise yes. your financial difficulties and help yes. you back to the road to recovery. That's right, and they, they want to, you to be in a position where you're in control. So if you, uh, this is really important with the envelopes that are stacking up. Yes. If you feel that you have a pile of envelopes and you still can't open them, take the pile, take them to an organisation and they will open them and they will start to work through that process and they will do that. That's really that's an important part of starting to get in control. And I can imagine with that taking control as you, you keep saying, that's a word that you've used quite a lot around the help that you can now get will make you f make a difference to you. You know, this so this um, I imagine dark rainy cloud that mm. seems to be following you everywhere where you're going, both at your home life and maybe into your work life and you know, you're suddenly going to feel less able to sort that because someone else is helping blow the cloud away. That's right. And importantly, you will then be able to sit with that person um, or even take the advice they've given you and you'll be able to work out all your priority, priority debts. And those are the debts where, you know, it's very important that you ensure that they're sorted out quite quickly, like your rent. Okay. So that um, the consequences of not paying your rent are that you might be evicted. You know, so it's important that you actually um, you have some advice on what order to put those debts or your money problems in, and those those charities can help. That that's that helps you in uh, to be in control. And that sounds like great advice, you mm. know. And I hadn't fully appreciated whilst I did, you know, that actually it can mean that I get mm. turfed out of my accommodation, and that might impact my children as well. Yes, and you know, it's the first step forward is just acknowledging that if you have those financial concerns that you sit down either take control yourself or go and ask for help so that someone can help you um, be in control and that's okay either one is fine now we know uh, to help people manage you know we've got various different chemicals going off in our brains yes so if we are troubling with money worries you know that may be playing on our mind the importance of physical exercise and we know that going out for a jog or a walk can help Yes, I'm a firm believer in when it comes to finances, it's part and, part and parcel of your well-being. So when you sit down and you have to work through all your finances and, and, and work a budget out, 
go for a walk afterwards and feel good feel really good that you've taken that first step enjoy that walk it helps with the process of, of, of well-being but there's an also an important note that actually if someone feeling like they can't cope or it's becoming difficult or yeah. life isn't worth living that they mm. should seek help immediately and that's GP and Samaritans yes don't leave it because if you feel so overwhelmed that you just simply cannot take that step forward and, and you you have you know too many negative thoughts going through your head you must talk to someone um, talk to your GP okay so what I'm getting from today is that if there is feeling this mountain coming through there I can have a little plan love your jam jars yeah. um, sales of jam are going to go up across <laughs> the country um, but there are organizations that can help you whatever the situation yes um, and if you are feeling very low please reach out and ask someone for help yes perfect absolutely. lovely Deborah Thanks. Lovely to have you here today. My thanks to Deborah from Plough and Share Credit Union for joining me today. For further information about today's conversation, including some very useful organisations, please follow the links accompanying this broadcast. I'm Paul Norris, this is Hiblio.tv and thank you for watching.